It's the man, the myth, the comedy icon, the one and only Bob Newhart. The E.T. exclusive. First of all, how are you feeling? I feel great. I just turned 92. It's been a great life. It's just, you know, making people laugh is, it's, it's wonderful. I love you, America. And America loves you right back, Bob. I mean, what an honor it was spending the day with this legend at his Los Angeles home. He's celebrating 62 years in show business. Hello. For me, Bob Newhart's show was like, it was appointment viewing. Well, we were at CBS Saturday Night Lineup, all in the family, MASH, Mary Tyler Moore, us, and Carol Burnett. And, and we used to get like Super Bowl numbers. Bob shot his show on the CBS Radford lot, which is also where we shoot E.T. That has such great memories. I spent 14 years there, and Mary Tyler Moore was at Seinfeld with her. What was the magic of having all those people there at the same time? You know, you, you passed by Ted and Ed, you know, from uh, Ed Asner and, yeah. and Ted Knight. But Bob had a little known secret. I had the lines on the back of a cereal box and the cereal box was there, but it was turned the wrong way because my lines were on the other side. The director, he said, cut, 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 cut. He said, Bob, nobody turns the cereal box around. I said, okay, you're right, you're right. But that's where the words were. There are some real top, I mean, I see, you see Richard Pryor, Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, Johnny Carson, Dean Martin. Bob's home is filled with memories with his fellow comedians, awards, magazine covers, even all the scripts from the Bob Newhart Show and Newhart. One of his most treasured pieces of memorabilia is this letter from JFK, signed just five months before his assassination. It was the president's birthday, and I entertained at it and received a letter from President Kennedy that said enjoyed it greatly. That's amazing. I want to play an interview we did with you in 1986. Yeah, I belong on television. I, I don't really belong in movies. I tried movies, and, and they didn't work. Movies did work for you. Well, Elf, Elf worked. I'll always be here for you. What was it like making Elf? It was a joy. That movie almost couldn't have made it, because if, if Will came off as just a, a jerk, uh, doesn't he realize he's, he's not an elf? Mm -hmm. But he, he was able, you just cared for him so much. Yeah. That you wanted it to be true. All right, let's talk about Big Bang Theory. Is he dangerous? <laughs> How much fun was that? It was great. I like Big Bang. I like the writing on it. I, I think the cast is incredible. Any chance that you could pop up on Young Sheldon? I hate to say no. <laughs> you never say no. Although Bob has won an Emmy for acting, his first love was stand-up comedy. In fact, his first two comedy albums in the early 1960s outsold all other records and won him three Grammys. So you win Album of the Year in 1960, and you beat out some pretty um, impressive people. Um, Frank Sinatra. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think Frank was too thrilled about moving to a, to a comic. Now, Bob is showcasing some of his classic comedy routines in the vinyl re-release of his 1992 TV special, Off the Record, which is on sale now. How fast were you, were you going when, when Mr. Adams jumped from the car? <laughs> I said, I'd like to do some of the early routines. I'd like to do them again. But the most important thing in Bob's life, his wife, Ginny. They're four kids and 10 grandkids. In a crazy business, in a crazy town, you've been married for 58 years. 58, yeah. How have you pulled that off? Comedians' marriages tend to laugh. There's something about laughter and the length of a marriage. Jack Benny, George Burns, Don Rickles. For some reason, laughter and marriage work. They, they last. She knows me better than, you know, the comedian and his ego get in the way, but, but she, she cuts right to, to the bone, and uh, she's been right time and time again. Oh, she, God, if she sees this, oh.